Okay, so what I'm gonna do, one thing that I like to do is have a little spray bottle like this, um, which I will get some more of for our class, but I'm just gonna spray my watercolors. And then I have made on here a few things. I've made a circle for precision. Precision is something that you have to practice. So if you were going to learn brush control with this brush, so that's, it's a round brush, right? When you lift it, this I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start down here with brush practice. When you lift your brush, let me see what color I'm gonna use, um, like this, you get a thin line, right? When you press down, you get a thick line. And the nice thing about watercolor is that is these pools of color. This is actually something that's good and interesting about watercolor. It's not a bad thing to have your paint kind of granulate and pool in different places because that's what makes it interesting. So um, don't worry if it does that. I'm gonna use two cups of water, one for cleaning, one for rinsing. And I am going to start thinking about brush practice. Like if I wanna make like a rose or something, um, I could press down and I like to use a lot of water when I paint. And I'm gonna start dark. I'm gonna go out here just with water. This is only water. And I'm actually just gonna dip into my color. You see how that gets lighter and lighter? It's kind of fun. Um, and it's nice to have these really, really light pastels. Like if you're gonna make leaves, adding depth to your painting, having a, and this is what I use this for, Having a super light version of the same color and a darker version is kind of an, a good way to add depth. So I could make a leaf that's like this light and then I could make one that's a little bit darker and it just makes it look a little bit more interesting and it's okay if it flows together and gets a little bit messy, it's totally fine. Practice doing some work that's just a little bit lighter that you can almost not see on your paper um, precision. Let's talk about precision. So what I want you to do at some point is practice concentric circles. And this takes a lot of patience. What you're going to do is you're going to start, I kind of like to start in the middle. And again, this isn't going to be perfect. I'm going to make a little circle. And this isn't necessarily, maybe I won't use this big brush. It's kind of floppy. Brushes are all different. So Brushes have different amounts of spring. So this guy springs back a little bit. This one's a little bit softer. Um, this one is a flat brush, so you can get more precision with this. Um, and then I'm gonna take some other colors and I'm just gonna go as close as I can to the circle or the shape that I did before. Okay, so now I have orange. I'm gonna do like from red to orange. I'm not gonna make you watch this whole thing, but you can kind of get an idea Okay, and then I always practice first one and then the next. So I do two cups of water. And then I'm gonna do maybe like an orangey yellow. And I'm gonna get this as close as I can. And again, I don't want my paint to be thick. So if it's too thick, like right now, it feels too thick. It needs to be transparent. You need to be able to see that color. So super duper transparent. And if it touches your other color, I mean, it's it's okay because you're just practicing. But practicing using, getting as close as you can to these circles because if you touch your next circle, it's gonna get kind of all together and mix. So I'm gonna keep going until I have a whole rainbow, right? The next one I wanna talk about is painting wet on wet. Just dry like so this you can get a lot of detail. Um, wet on wet is really fun in watercolor. So I'm gonna paint this whole circle with water. Should I use my clean water? Just water. I'm going to grab some of this blue. I know this is a blue that's gonna look really cool. Watch that. So maybe I wanna make like a galaxy. I'll make a mini galaxy. Some of these colors actually, um, spread out they bloom it's called blooming more than others this one is the one I was talking about that is the Daniel Smith amethyst that has real amethyst in it it actually doesn't bloom as much um, but it's still really pretty and when this dries it looks a little bit dull but when it dries you'll notice that it actually has sparkles in it which is kind of cool and then some of the other ones like this is kind of like a hot pink no that's not the color I want I have to look at my color charts okay this guy 
so wet on wet that's what wet on wet looks like and you can have all kinds of fun stuff this is lunar black that black that's that stick over there i was telling you guys about and when it dries i want you to come back and look at it at some point it granulates do you see the little like tiny bits of kind of sand almost that's in there isn't that fun um so there's that and then i want you to practice a gradient so if you're gonna go like from got like a little moon from one color to the next this is what i would do i would start with water down here and you kind of have to work quick with watercolor so just super super fast make yourself a little gradient Watch that. Um, and then salt, I'm gonna do this really fast. I wanna, well, I'll do uh, salt first because if you've not seen salt on watercolor, you have to wait for it to dry. But you gotta see this, it's really cool. So the nice thing about some of these colors, like there are actually blacks that are warm and blacks that are cool. So you can have like an ivory black. There's actually, and I'm not sure if you look at these, do you see these four? These are all blacks right here. Um, there are, and then there's a couple down here too. Whoops. There are warm and cool blacks and you can definitely see the difference when you paint them. It's weird. You wonder like, why would you have four blacks in your palette? But they really do make a big difference um, when you have different colors. So watch this. This is salt. And it's going to take a while, but um, if you come back and like, a little bit, you'll see. The next one that's really fun is, let me see, I'm gonna do like a dark green. Rubbing alcohol is really fun. And here's an example of a cool green versus a warm green. This is called, this is a color, I think this is Daniel Smith Cascade Green. And you can see the granulation in this, or this might be malachite, I don't know. I don't have the, I should memorize all the colors. Um, oh, there's one I really want to show you. It's, wait, it's the fourth one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is called Serpentine. And it's one of my very favorite greens. Can you tell the difference between the warm and cool? Yes. You guys are going to get hooked on the expensive <coughs> watercolors. So this is called Serpentine. And if I want to make these into a gradient, I'm just going to like do that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do rubbing alcohol. Check this out. If I put a few drops of this into my palette, you want to use a different brush that you're going to wash with soap and water when you're done because what it will do is it will stick to your brush and it'll make your paint fall away from the rubbing alcohol. So you can add kind of a different texture and it doesn't work in some paints as much as it works in others. So it's kind of fun to play around. This almost looks like an animal skin. Um, but look at this serpentine. If you guys look at it up close while it's drying, isn't that cool? It's super pretty. Um, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to practice some of these things. And like this brush, this is a Raphael brush. Um, and it's a nicer brush. If I wanted to make like a leaf or something, I would, I could do like a one stroke. I could like press it, pull, press and pull. And then I would probably just have a plain water brush, do a little dot in here. And then I'm creating variation by mixing it with other colors. So, um, you know, maybe I wanna do like a bluish green or something just to add variety. When you're painting, you don't want to have all the same tone and mix it up a little bit in terms of like greens or reds or yellows or anything like that but you also want to have harmony in your colors and that's what we're going to talk about when we start to actually paint our things or is color harmony so certain colors just look kind of discordant with each other and other colors look awesome with each other the secret is if you mix a little bit if you have a main color that you're using and you mix a little bit of that color into your other colors and you have a palette of like four to five colors everything will harmonize so keep practicing with your brush and try to do these little skinny circles and then come back and look at the salt later when you have time. But um, practice doing light to dark. You can also do layers. So that's called, this is called glazing. 
once I'm done with this, maybe I wanna do another layer over top of this, which I really wanna make sure that it's nice and dry. But if I work quickly, um, I can just add a little bit more to that. So there's that. All right, you're free. <laughs> Thank you.